Hey guys, Joe here with Joe Martin VC, and today we're going to take a look at the process for building a windowsill to go in this window. And to do that, we're going to be using some 2x8 cedar that I have here because that's uh, what I have laying around. So it should make for an excellent windowsill, and let's get to the process. I'm going to make a conscious effort to not start every section of filming with the words all right, like I did last time. So what we're going to do is measure what our window sill, what our window actually is. So we're looking at 35 and a quarter inches. So we know that is our maximum length between the window. And then we're going to add three inches onto that. So 38 and a quarter, because whenever you actually build the window sill, you want it to come out about an inch and a half on either side. So adding three inches will get us to do that. The other thing we want to do is just measure the inside of the window to make sure it's actually even all the way across because sometimes it's not and it'll be a bit uh, narrower or wider in the back. You kind of want to match to that. So looking at it here, I do see it's about 35 and a quarter all the way down, so it's squared. And you can actually just use your tape measure all the way across. You will notice down in the bottom corner here that it does tell you how large your tape measure is, which this one's three, three and three quarters. So I look at it here, I see 31 and three eighths, 31 and a half. And if we add three and three quarters to that, we do get 35 and a quarter. So next thing we need to do is take and put those measurements onto our two by eight, and then we can start to cut everything. What we're doing here is measuring out our total windowsill size and then cutting it out. You'll notice I actually make two marks here as I'm not confident that this random piece of cedar that I have is really all that square. So I make one mark at the one inch mark and another at the 38 and a quarter inch mark then cutting both with my miter saw so I know it's as squared as I can make it. I had to re-record this because my camera decided it should only record for all of half a second before cutting off, hence why the lines are already there. The next thing we'll need to do is to measure the distance going from the actual window itself here all the way out to the windowsill on both sides because it does tend to differ. In my case, this is five and a quarter over on this side and only five and an eighth on this side. So we'll take those measurements and bring them over to our piece of wood. Now I've got my piece of wood upside down. This is actually going to be the bottom. So I'm going to invert what I have over on the wall. So over here, I'm going to measure out to five and one quarter, because this is going to end up being in that corner. Go ahead, grab our pencil, mark out those five and a quarter. Do the same over here for five and one eighth, since it's a little bit less. Five and one eighth. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and grab our square, which I really need to find my smaller square, but that's fine. We're going to mark out for a total of inch and a half. So we're going to move this over to just the 15 mark so we can easily mark an inch and a half. And I know that this is a perfectly square 90 degree angle, so I can easily just come over here, come out, inch and a half. Up, and this could be 
be fun after the clamp's in the way. Okay. So you have to move the clamp. The clamp is more important for when I go to cut this. So, right over here. know that we have to cut all this out. So all this is going to cut away so that way we have an inch and a half out on our windowsill. That's it. So let's come over to the other side, pick up a pencil. And can we? Oh, we can. So same thing, inch and a half. We should get this right here. That's why we have clamps. It's uh, it's falling. But that's okay. okay. Go ahead, put this up here. Walk all the way down. And then same thing. So the reason that we've chosen to uh, go ahead and use this as the bottom and cut out this area is because, if you look right here, we have this nice little ugly piece. Uh, we've got this blowout right here, so that will go away. And so we'll get the bottom. We have a cleaner, prettier piece, in my opinion, up here. So we'll go ahead, we'll cut this out, and then we'll do a test fit, see how it looks. The next thing we'll need to do is go ahead and cut out the section that will actually be going into the windowsill. I'm just using a simple Japanese uh, flush cut saw. Got this from Harbor Freight, so it's not actually Japanese. I'm pretty sure it's made in China, but that's okay. One thing to be careful of if you're using a saw like this is that it is very flexible. So you can easily bend and not cut straight. And the main reason I'm using this guy is because it's the sharpest saw I have, so. Go ahead. Voila. Now we just have to do that again on this side, which we're not going to record. Next thing we're going to do is check to make sure it actually fits. Go ahead and take it. Be careful not to hit the wall too much. Make sure it goes all the way in. And mine fits almost all the way back. Uh, you probably saw that piece of wood back there. So I do have to cut that out or notch this piece of wood, but it does fit. So the next step here will be to give ourselves a, a, a rounded edge or flat edge, whatever we're gonna do for finishing. Now either paint and stain, and get all attached in. Should be good. The next part is completely up to you for how you want to finish your piece. I opted to go with using a half inch rounding bit to round over my edges, but this could also be done with just some sandpaper by hand. You don't have to use a router for it. You'll notice that my workbench does double as a router table, which would have been amazing to use for this, as you would just effortlessly glide the wood across the table and get the perfect finish. However, neither of my routers fit for the holes that it has, and even with drilling my own holes, I have to custom order screws for it to sit flush, so we just used the 18 volt Ryobi router for the job and it worked beautifully. 
And for those wondering, yes, I did make a huge mess in my kitchen, but that's what the shop vac behind us is for. After you decide on the edge that you want and make it using either router, hand sanding, or even just leaving a natural finish, you're ready for the final step before attaching the windowsill to the actual window. The pole is still open for if we're going to stain this to be a red cedar to match the living room wall, or if we're painting it gloss white like a standard windowsill. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below, and the follow-up video will have us using the finish that all of you decide on. This is where part one of this windowsill build will end due to waiting for the community poll. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with new content as it comes out, as well as part two when it comes out next week. Thanks so much for watching, take care.